Hello, Wildfire One. Yeah, this is this is Wildfire One. Fifth Element. No, I, I don't want it. I know this is the month of movies, but I'm not going to do a podcast element. on that movie. No, I don't want to do the fifth element. No, fifth I, I don't. I, I really don't. Oh. Suffer. Oh. oh. Okay, I'll fucking do it. Oh, God. Oh. Thank you. What is up, you sexy nerds? I am Wildfire One. This is Nerds and You Sexy, the podcast you're listening and watching. Episode 110. With me today is... Monster. You probably have seen us if you've watched our stream. Well, anyway, this starts the month of movies. We're starting the month of movies this month, and the, we were going to do... We were going to do Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, but I got kind of coursed. I, I got a phone call, as you guys saw, and... And uh, we're stuck with a movie that I really don't care for. But we're going to talk about it anyway. We're talking about The Fifth, Fifth Element. Element. Growing up, I had um, I had people tell me, oh, it's Bruce Willis' best movie. It's Bruce Willis' best movie. It's not Bruce Willis' best movie. It's not. It's not. Bruce Willis, was okay. the, his acting was mediocre in that movie, in my opinion. And I like Bruce Willis. I'm a huge Bruce Willis fanatic. I love it. But uh, Mila, whatever her name is, was Bravich. actually the one, yeah, Braka Bravovich, whatever the fuck her <laughs> name is, uh, is actually the one that stole the show. Yes. Because her acting was actually really good, in my opinion. Um, when was the last time you watched this movie? 2005, 2004? So a while ago. Yeah. It's been a while for me, too. But every time I watch it, I'm reminded that I hate this movie. <laughs> uh I mean, come on, let's, all the way from the dumbass villain with a fucking thing on his head for no reason, and <laughs> that stupid By ass... By the way, what does it cover? What's, it, what's his, the purpose? His pride? I, I don't know, like, what's the purpose of that? It's just a headpiece, like, I'm cool. All his fucking... <laughs> I didn't even notice this until tonight watching. All his villain, like, henchmen were fucking wearing them, too. And his corporation, <laughs> like... And tight-ass suits. And tight-ass suits, like... A lot, in fact, a lot of the headpieces in this movie were, like, unnecessary. Yes. You know, like, I, I noticed that the, the, the people were flying, like, that the space jet, the, the, the little spaceship they're wearing. He's, like, they look like these old school, like, peasant caps with fucking, like, with, like, fucking plug-ins that didn't need to be there. It had right. to be futuristic. It's not futuristic. Well, that's stupid. We'll start from the beginning. It starts off with... Ancient Egypt, because any movie that has to do with any of the future can't start off without having ancient Egypt in it. Uh, with this mysterious, yes, with this ancient sect of priests who protect these rocks that are supposed to save the world. And <laughs> it, fire, earth, wind, water, heart. Captain Planet, he's a hero. No, she's a hero. Oh, in this one. In this one. But, so, it starts off with that, and then, like, there's these big-ass, what what'd I say they look like? They look like they're from the Dark Crystal. Turtles. These big-ass turtle, yeah, you call them turtles. Turtle-looking fucking things waddling around. They're supposed to be scary. <laughs> I don't know not, not if they're supposed to be scary, but they're dumb. They're dumb as fuck. I agree with that one. Like, I'm going to be super, super judgy on this movie. I'm warning you guys now, like, this is... I'm starting off on a movie I did not care about. I'm gonna be the nice one. Yeah, be the nice one. You, you, yeah, mm -hmm. two dicks down from me. But anyway, <laughs> so it goes on into the future, and you meet Corbin Dallas, you know, and and he happens to be an ex-military guy, real big badass, and um, supposedly. You know, which, which they don't introduce him too well. No, they don't really. He's just he, he wakes up in his bed, this future. And I will say this: the way they got the his, his room set up, everything's like almost like space. It it um, it saves space. Like everything yeah. moves and changes. And there's a lot. I've even seen stuff on uh, Facebook that that talks about stuff like that. Like they they're doing that shit now. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Um, but it, he introduces him, and and he gets mugged. If you can call it a mugging, he, he, um, the guy looks nervous. He looks like a like a two tweaker. year old, right, a tweaker. Like, and <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna mug this guy. And you know, the guy basically, Corbin Dallas takes his gun away, and he's like, It's okay. 
you can keep it. It's like so <laughs> bad acting. And now you're going to hear me say that. Bad acting, bad script, bad writing, just bad, bad, bad in this movie. Um, and I know I'm probably going to piss a lot of people off because a lot of people love The Fifth Element. I, I think it's entertaining, but it's by far not Bruce Willis's best movie. No, Die Hard is better. Yeah, Die Hard, yeah, you know, yeah, later on. There's a few line. different movies. I mean, Indestructible, right? That's one. Well, I've of, never seen that one. Well, that's the superhero movie, right? But, um, but I mean, the, the, the Sixth Sense was a good movie. That was later yes. on, of course. But I see. You dude. know, yeah. <laughs> so... It introduces him, and you get this like brief kind of like "fuck you" introduction, really bad, badly written. You can tell he's next military man. Kind of shows his that ah, was this his mom calling at one point at that at the beginning. I forget. Yeah. Him. But we find out he's a cab driver, and he just just really down on his luck. So um, so we'll zoom in. We'll zoom forward a little bit, and then we get this we get this uh, giant rock of doom. Giant Rock of Death, I guess, which is the actual bad guy, which, you know, bad Final guy. Fantasy called, they want their fucking plot back. <laughs> you know? <sighs> so bad. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, it was, it worked in Final Fantasy VII. It did, but... That was a great game. This was, this was, you know, the, and this is, a, this rock, like, had its own fucking... It was Voice. A, it was, yeah, it was a smart rock. You know what I think they did? They just got all the smart televisions and launched them into space, and it just became one sentient being. <laughs> That's why it's pissed at the human at humanity. Yeah. But um, mm-hmm. so you get this thing, and it, it it introduces that, and it's a bad creature. That's it's supposed to be evil, the devil or whatnot. <laughs> It's supposed to be like the evil incarnate. Yeah, it's supposed to be like the bad thing that destroys the world. Or supposedly every five thousand years. <laughs> All right. Who would want to do that every five thousand? People would have to forget. Not that preach guy, preacher guy. That's for sure. Yeah. But, and that's the thing. The set, the sect of preachers, like throughout just the years. One. Well, this yeah. in this point, it's just one. They had to the have mated yeah. or done something. You know they they they're teaching each other whatever throughout the years and and uh, the dumbass rock that's supposed to be the bad guy. And Not then impressed. and then you, yeah then you enter the priest the new priest which is uh, the act the act for the priest was cool. He yeah. seemed alright. I mean other than uh, some really bad acting, that one part it's a it's a it's a it's a <laughs> the fucking bomb. bullshit. <sighs> so. What happens is the, the immediate danger is coming. They decide, you know, skip the fucking little bullshit things. Tell me if I miss anything you want to talk oh, about. No, let's but talk about the ships for a minute. <laughs> they look like turds. The first one, the first ship that you see in this movie looks like a fucking turd. <laughs> like a big ass shit that's curved and it's uh, like. And then George Lucas, I'm sure, sued them because, like, our ships in the future. Look like cut off versions of like star destroyers. Yeah. They just not pizza They're not shaped. Pizza shaped. They're just cut off in the front. They look, uh, uh, <laughs> it's not completely horrible. It isn't. It's it's entertaining. Yeah. There's parts that I there's parts that I laughed at, but it's just it's like they took the bat worst parts of everything and just put it together and it became a big <laughs> shit show. If they well, I think you and I even said this. If if they put a little more time and effort into it, like a little more love into the story and the writing, yeah. it probably would have been good. Wouldn't mind seeing well, it is the nineties. Well, it was the nineties, but there was a lot of good movies in the nineties. Okay, so, Evil Death Rock, come and destroy us. Yeah, here comes and here enter enter the preacher, trying to tell the president of the United States, played by none of by the actor who played Debo. <laughs> Cross-eyed. Well, he wasn't cross-eyed in this one. That's good. He's yeah, a good actor. Yeah, barely. It was. Well, you true, can see it. True. He's a good actor, though. That guy, that, that fella, was a pretty, he's a pretty good actor. Yeah. Um, and then, like, that's another thing. The military in this show, like, the military and the cops. <laughs> and I, I'm going to get joke. to this a little further. They're a joke. They're, it's like, it's like they're dumb as fuck. Yeah. Like, they can't. Not organized. No. A cab driver got away from them. I mean, sure, <laughs> shit, he was a fucking military hard-ass, but... Is he the only one? 
it seems like. Into the preacher. The preacher tells him, hey, we got to get this the the stone, the rocks that will save the world and the magical being that, that puts all this shit together. So, you know, here comes this, uh, a little bit, a little, little later after that, not much later after that, but here comes this fucking robotic looking turtle thing and flying up jet, flying mm-hmm. up a plane, plane, flying a spaceship. Shit ship. Ship ship. Shit ship. Yes. <laughs> flying a shit ship. And then they get attacked by a fucking like pig faced dog fucking looking asshole aliens <laughs> that, that, I mean, you want to talk about like generic? And I guess maybe right for the 90s it wasn't so generic, but I mean, I talk like this. <laughs> It's how much of that, and all the aliens had this weird fucking, like, filter in their voice yeah. that was ridiculous. Either too high or too low. Well, too high or too low. But uh, they blow up the ship. The ship crashes into a moon. I guess the moon. Something. And something. And it, it just blows it. up. And they get, like, the arm of whatever the fuck was, the, was supposed to be the fifth element, the per, the perfect being. And uh, Mila Bovovich. No COVID. No COVID. Damn it, you may got me fucking up on it. Good. I'm not going to pr- pretend to pronounce her name. That gal from, from Resident Evil. <laughs> Look her name up. Um. So so they, they get the arm, and then they, that's probably one of the cooler parts of the movie. I, I told him a joke earlier, he kind of laughed at it. I says, it was probably where all the money in the movie went to, this one scene, <laughs> Just, where they're yeah. putting together the character, like the, the uh, Mila, whatever, the uh, fifth element character. Ooh. Lilu, let's say that. Lilu, where well, they're putting Lilu back together, and they're doing like bones and like skin and like everything, and and it's I mean actually even watching it now the graphics look pretty decent. Yeah. Like it's I'm like mm, okay. Choppy but decent. A little choppy, yeah. It's not when, but um, it was twenty some years ago. Yeah, and then it turns out the fifth element is a girl. Who who would have thought? You know, I guess back then it was a surprise because they kept referring to the Fifth Elm as a dude. At this point, uh, we meet our fucking, uh, again, the fucking weird head dude. <laughs> the bad guy who makes, he has this accent and he makes no... Crappy accent. Crappy accent. He talks like he's a southerner. And then later on it sounds like crap. Yo, it's like he doesn't know where he wants to go with it. Yeah. The whole movie doesn't know where it wanted to go. No, the whole movie didn't know where it wanted to go. <laughs> didn't know who the bad guy was supposed to be. and It was either that guy or The Rock. And, eh. so, and yeah. I, at one point I thought, I th- thought, who the fuck is the boss? Hey, who's the bad guy? Yeah. Who's, who's the one in charge? Well, obviously it, it, the bad guy's The Rock. The, the big giant death rock from the sky. What, that glows? Yeah. All of a sudden moves? So... Yeah, it moves and it's sentient and it knows what's going on around it. And so, he what what we find out is that is that um, Zorn is his name, I think, uh, if I remember Zorn, correctly, Zorn or something, something like that. Zorn Z- Zog. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's so forgettable. You find out he's wanting the rocks for um, just for this rock. The, he wants the rocks for the rock. Well, he wants it. Everything get dis- he explained in the movie. He yeah, wants shit to get destroyed. He, he doesn't so he can profit off of it or whatever. The, because yeah, that that weird speech he gives later mm-hmm. on. So anyway, at least that's what I got out of it. Yeah, so he, he, that happens, and then at one point, Lilu, the put back together fifth element, escapes from this highly militarized fucking installation. She just escapes somehow. Well, she reaches through like a, he goes this thing. Yeah, but then she's all of a sudden in a in a. Uh, Sewer, and you're like, where the hell? Did well, she it wasn't a sewer; it was like a vent out of there. And her hands were black. I know her hands were like completely. Well, maybe she, maybe it was a sewer. You never know. It's space sewer. Yeah. Uh, flying cars and all that. Uh, so she's trying to get yeah. away from the cops, and the cops are like, "Stop! Don't! Don't go!" And so she, she ends up jumping off this giant building and falls into the taxi cab of Corbin Dallas. Go straight through it. Right through it. No, you Wait, know. What I, what I thought was weird. She went through the top, but she was she was going fast enough. She and she went through, through the top it, like, easily like that. She yeah. went through the bottom. I just don't know. Easy. Maybe maybe it's like a real car. The bottom like is more armored. I don't know. So she lands in the back of this, and at this point, unscathed. Unscathed. Well, her hands are clean too, out of nowhere. We. Just, that's one of the little things I noticed. Is you know, that I thought, and I was like, that's bullshit. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, the 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 fact that uh, the whole movie that's the that's what turned me off. Um, so obviously, Corbin Dallas sees her and falls in love with her because she's the perfect being. Honestly, I think her titties are a little too small <laughs> to be called the perfect being. He falls in love with her and more or less steals away from the cops, like breaks the law, loses his job for it. Um, and for some reason, the military needs him again. Like it's just perfect, perfect timing. They, they need him to win it. Yeah, something. they they got that, Maybe they set that, it that little win thing. They yeah. set it up to where he wins some sort of trip to some stupid place, some place on there and out there, and uh, they're supposed to go. And it somewhere between that point uh, after the point where he meets her, he yeah. takes her to the preacher because she says his name. Yeah, because he's, he keeps saying preacher. And that, that's the point where I say she's act, she, does, she does good acting because... Um, she can speak broken English good. She's like, please help. And like you see tears and shit. And, uh, I don't know. That movie... Her acting was good. Like I'll yeah. give her a golf clap for the acting. So he takes her to the preacher. And the preacher notices who it is and basically kicks Corbin Dallas out. Because, you know... I don't even know why. Like, you didn't even more or less thank the dude. Like, hey, you saved your, you just gave us the savior of humanity. Goodbye, bitch. I think it was more like, oh, we're going to keep this a secret. You don't know nothing. Yeah, that's a possibility. I, that could be it, too. Um, I don't know. It was hard to tell. This movie, this movie was hard to tell. <laughs> so after that, a bunch of other shit happens. And we're just going to... He, he talks to, like, the general. The general comes and tells him, hey... This is what we need you to do. Am I skipping anything? There's parts between that that, like, happen, but there's a lot of shit in this that just shouldn't have been there. Like, it shouldn't have been a part of it. Or maybe more... uh, Explained a little better. Yeah, it could have... More emphasized on. Yeah, more and more emphasis. So, moving on, we get to the the point where the general comes to his Corbin Dallas to do this, that, and the other thing. Uh, to bring Lilu to uh, get the stones because the stones were hidden. Um, that attack that initially happened at the, you know, beginning. At the beginning didn't work out. And uh, we got to see kind of how bad the bad guy was, the fucking head dude. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm going to keep doing that because that's all I can relate him to. Like, he's got a bad comb, the over. comb over. Yeah, the shitty comb over and the fucking hair bald on this side. I still want to know what the hell is that there for? It's just bad. It's just like, it's like we gotta make the bad guy stand out. Let's give him a <laughs> shitty comb over and a fucking uh, head helmet thing that fucking covers half his bald head and a shitty accent and a shitty accent. So the the military comes to see Corbin Dallas, and they're like, "We need you, yada yada yada. You won this trip, you know. Try, try. We need you to go from point A to point B with so and so." Uh, how they even knew that those two were, they even knew each other, like maybe other than the cops, that, uh, that, that him and Lilu were in cahoots still, well, I don't even understand how that, that they works. They didn't explain that too well. No, they didn't. But uh, maybe they thought he was hiding him, hiding her or something, I don't know. Maybe. This is the part that gets me, is that, is that it, they, go in the, they go into his apartment and all of a sudden you, you get that knock or a doorbell ring, or whatever the fuck it was, and Lilu's right there, and his dumb ass is like, his, with all his training, <laughs> ho, ho, vagina! So he opens the door, he makes the other, he makes the military people hide, and this is what I call bullshit. In the freezer. How, what general would fucking, like, agree to hide in a fucking freezer? Like, I know it's a movie, I do, I understand, it's a movie, but that's bad writing. That's just bad, every, that's just bad writing. It's bullshit. Yeah. That is bullshit so he gets him in the freezer and then Lilu comes in and it happens to be she's there with the preacher and the preacher's got a gun and basically holds him up for his tickets at this point uh, everything's going bad for Corbin Dallas and so they more or less they mug him and he wakes up they, you know they, he wakes up and he opens the refrigerator up or the fucking colonel or general or who the fuck that guy was and they're frozen he's like nah, like in carbonite and shit 
By the way, later on, he's seems yeah, he's perfectly alive. fine. He's alive. How did he survive that? If he's frozen, isn't that death? Yeah. He's like, I'll take the, I'll take the mission. Well, I guess the mission's failed already because you killed your general. <laughs> so then, and now, and then it goes to this, this, this part where they're going, getting on this plane to go on this, this all-paid vacation thing, and everyone's Corbin Dallas. Everyone yeah. is saying that there's Corbin. tons of, like. Trash. Trash in the background. Yeah, and we're, first thing, it was like, why is there trash? They never explained that. They didn't even no. say it. We're sorry for all the trash. They apologize for that, and they don't even really explain it. Mm-hmm. And uh, and at first, it's um, it's like the preacher's little fucking lackey, and and Lilu, pretend, and the lackeys pretend to be Corbin. And all here comes, sweaty. Yeah. Nervous he's all like, freaking out. I don't know if I can do this. And he's, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm Corbin Dulles. And uh, and here comes here comes uh, Bruce Willis is like oh he was doing this for me he's a good guy blah 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 it's time to go <laughs> gets him out of there basically takes his spot yeah. where it, you know uh, on the mission nice. and uh, but before we get into that before we get in too far I just remembered there's that stupid ass speech about chaos that he gives the preacher when he asked the preacher after he they couldn't find the stupid stones he asked the preacher where the stones are at. So he tells, he tells, he makes this big ass ordeal speech out, like, and he's drinking from a cup, a glass, and he puts it down and he slides it off the table and he says, he says, you know, look at this cup, it's boring, and breaks it. He says, oh, look, things are happening now, more or less. I'm not verbatim on this. (laughs) Things are happening now, and people paid money for these robots to be made to fix it, and little fucking Roomba looking things fixing shit. I mean, you know, Fifth Element, you got that right. You you totally you totally got the future there, yeah. You know, and and then the only thing you know, moving uh, from that point, he puts a, a another glass comes out and pours some water in. And it's funny because everything it's like water, mm. and then fruit, and the thing comes up as fruit. And it, why does the why does the voice have to say everything? Like he grabs a cherry, he goes a cherry, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he drinks from it and he chokes on it. And that's where, you know, the, the preacher kind of gets his saying, like, ha ha, fuck you, I, you know, I'm right, you're wrong. Uh, some shit happens, bad shit happens, and then you, we, we meet Rudy, played by Chris Tucker? Yeah, Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker. I can't stand Rudy. Rudy something. Rudy, oh, Rudy Roll annoying. or something like that. But he, he, I just, Rudy Rod. Rudy Rod. I just... I just that one scene where he's getting it on with that chick, and she's like, "Mr. Rod," and he's like, "You can call me Rudy." <laughs> That's funny. There's some funny scenes yeah. with him, but um, they're getting on this the spaceship, plane, jet, whatever you want to call it, and that we were talking about how they get in these little pods and they push a button and go instantly yeah. to sleep. And I was saying, I need one of those for my room. That would be amazing. I would love to go to sleep that quick, you know. And then wake up that quick, and oh, your yeah. alarm goes off. Oh yeah, ready for work, beep, 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 and you're wide awake and shit. Um, Don't need no coffee then. Oh, fuck no. You just inject it into you and shit. <laughs> they uh. And you get to meet Rudy. He's annoying. He's all about his show. He's important. He's, you know, he's a, he's a big celebrity. And uh, he's interviewing Corbin Dallas. And Corbin's not saying much, so it pisses him off. And, you know, there's a point where he's like, hey, tomorrow I'll try and act like you have more than a two-word vocabulary. Yeah. And then Corbin just grabs him by his throat and, and lifts him on the on the wall and is like, you know what, just stay the fuck away from me tomorrow, whatever, yada, yada, yada. So the whole reason they're there is you're supposed to meet the, and this is the iconic part of the movie. This is probably the part everyone remembers. They're supposed to meet this, this diva, I think they called it. Yeah, diva. They meet a diva and it's a singer and she's holding the stones. That's where the stones are at. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and everyone wants these stones. The fucking... Dumbass looking aliens, the 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 retard, plastic head, plastic face, yeah, plastic dude. Like it's just it's just, at that one point it just becomes a clusterfuck of just bad choreography. Yeah. Like there's a point where the music starts, like they're sitting down, they're listening to this opera, opera esque kind of thing, and uh, and of course again, if you guys have seen the movie, this is probably the best part of the movie. And the I, most action, it's the most actually. action. Yeah, it's it's got it's kind of the most interesting part of the movie. You got that 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 gal singing, and it's kind of cool, and, and you know, and then they got the action in the background, it's and bad. it was just bad. She hits the dude behind her like she does that thing mm-hmm. where she dink dink, and 
it doesn't even look like she hit the dude behind her, <laughs> you know, and I mean, fly ten feet, you know. Yeah, and so shit hits the fan. Um, the dick face mon- monster aliens go out and more or less take over the ship uh, wh- while the the music was going on, and the diva gets shot, and Bruce Willis talks to her, and, and more or less she says like, "Hey, the stones are inside me." And I like that 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 particular scene kind of cracks me up because he's acting like it's a fucking like it's a riddle. <laughs> Stones are inside you. What? They're literally inside her. Like, breach the fuck in. I think intelligence went from here to like down here. So he gets the stones, and it's it, at that point it just becomes a fight to get out of there. And of course the bald head dude, the uh, plastic head dude, puts a bomb on the ship. Gets what he thinks are the stones and leaves. We find out those aren't the stones. No. He has to come back. And uh, about that time, everyone's getting off the ship, and everything's everything's kind of settling down. He's, he goes to the, to the bomb and sets in whatever code to turn it off, and it's off. Yeah. Five five seconds, right? Five seconds. Five seconds. And then at one point, like one of those dick faced aliens, is like for honor, for glory, or for. Big titty bitches. I don't know what he I forget what he says. It's hard to hear him. Yeah, because of that, that filter. But he hits a button and another bomb comes up. And guess what time it's on? Five, Five seconds. seconds. So, <laughs> coincidence. And, of course, that. I mean, right right next to the guy, too. Right next to the fucked up head guy. And, yeah. and it blows up. And that was probably the best part of the movie. He died. Yeah. No more him. No more shitty uh, action. It goes from there. And <coughs> about that point, somehow. <coughs> me too. You're about dying? that. Huh? One time my dog made it sound like that and it died. <laughs> I'm not dying. <laughs> For some reason, um, the Death Rock realizes that it that its dumbass head guy died or doesn't have the stones and starts hauling ass to again. Earth. Plot device is what it is uh so it's hauling ass plot device it's hauling ass back to earth and we find out and okay we're all we only got so much time before we gotta save the world so they get they get to egypt or this always egypt he always egypt yeah so they gotta they, they start putting the stones in these, these little these little blocks where they go to fire to fire water to water wind to wind and earth to earth and they're sitting there trying to figure out how to fucking open them how to make them work while Lilu is dying while Lilu's yeah she got shot earlier in the ship and she's just sitting there like ah no one gives a fuck about her she's in the center <laughs> slab like yeah and, and she and, oh life. not to mention she watched she had to watch some depressing shit on the way back to earth yeah you know she was watching she typed in war on the computer and had a big moment where she was sad she's in the middle slab like nah no one fucking cares they're too worried about the stones right and um so the the little, I guess the 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 wannabe priest, the the priest, the priest bitch, the priest, priest bitch uh, you know, basically sighs on on one of them, and it's the windstone, and it actually moves. He's like, "Oh my God, Bruce something Willis happened!" Did it, and it opened up more, and he's like, "Oh, wait a second, I think I figured it out," <laughs> and blows on it and shit. <laughs> And so it's like, and it opens up, and like, and like another fucking like, yeah, another magic rock appears above it. And so they, that's what they figure out, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, I think even Lulu give him a hint, like water blow, water wind blows. Yeah. Fire burns, and I told this guy, I was like, you know what else blows? This movie. This it, movie. It, it gets down to the fire stone. Yes. And uh, which they have only one match. Yeah, one match, of course. And it almost goes out, which, like, I, I guess, I think everyone kind of went, oh, God, I hope it didn't go out at that point. Like, even I was like, oh, no. I was I was more along, more along the line saying, it's going to go out, because I had forgotten the plot. You know what I kind of hoped? I kind of hoped it did go out, so we'd all die and not remember the movie. <laughs> like, and then Lilu refuses to work. <laughs> She's just sitting in the middle, like, uh, like, and then Bruce Willis, is, Bruce Willis is like, like, trying to talk to her, like, I need you, I need you, and she's got her tears going down. And why do you need? Why me? do you need me? They, they <sighs> then the most, yeah, the stupidest shit happens. She does this like fucking thing where her head goes up and beams come out her mouth, 
or some shit. Like, I've never kissed a girl and that's never happened to me. <laughs> he just didn't do it right. I guess. <laughs> and then it, it, and then <laughs> it, hits, it hits the fucking... It hits the fucking death ball and it becomes destiny! <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> it hits the death ball and the death ball dies and suddenly the movie's destiny. And, and that's why at that point I was like, wait a second. I had to pause it and I looked at Monster and I go, Monster, a redhead saved the world from a giant ball. A giant meteor. What's this remind you of? Final Fantasy VII. Stopped. Oh, yeah. Yes, with uh, with Holy, but she didn't go. She didn't do that. No, it was much more epic. It wasn't a mouth orgasm. I don't know what the fuck that was. Like, she wanted the ball. She wanted the ball. So, and it ends. It ends. It ends, it ends uh, with him saving the world, and the president Debo. President Debo wants to interview him. And uh, so they're in like some chamber thing healing yeah. up. Like the guy <laughs> that put them in there was like, "Oh, you want to give them five minutes?" And then it ends on a freeze frame. Typical, typical, you know, gay for fucking nineties. Typical nineties. You know, like it, it's the the movie. It it's entertaining. It is the movie's entertaining. It's just not good. I can be entertained and laugh here and there. Like, some of the things Rudy said, as much as I hate that character, well, it was funny. Yeah. You know, he's getting on with that chick. You can call me Rudy. No, you can call me Rudy. And he's got that dick fucking haircut. <laughs> I thought you were going to bring that. Yeah, uh, well, I, I, for, I wanted to forget about it. Because let's talk about that for a second. Let's, was, what the fuck? Like, all the head pieces, like the helmets and the fucking anything on your head is just stupid in this movie. What is with the blonde dick on his head? <laughs> it looked like a bunch of fucking like pubic hair just shaped like a dick. I was thinking the same thing. If he chased me, if you wore that, if someone wore that on their head and chased, I would run. And wore the, like the dress. Oh yeah, he wore dresses with like yeah. It, but uh, you know, I get, I get it. They're trying to show that the future is different. Like that, that uh, fashion is different. Yeah. That music is different. Everything's different. So, what would you uh, like? Is there anything? You would, give me, give me the good and bad of everything that we've uh, we've seen on this movie so far. Well, the good is very little, but there is some good. Honestly, how, how stupid the acting was. It was so stupid. It was so it was bad. So, it was so, good. It was so bad. It was good, like yeah. a B movie, yeah. but it was supposed to be an A movie. It was supposed to be like, yeah, it was like it was supposed to be a blockbuster hit. Yeah. Fifth Element was the glorified Captain Planet meets fucking Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, taking elements from uh, Star Wars and uh, oh yeah, with the ships. Poop. And, poop. That that first ship should have told us what we expect for the movie. Shit. Shit. Whole lot of shit. So this movie a cartoony? I think it was. I think it was a '90s attempt at a live action anime. Uh, maybe, maybe we should do some research and see if it, there was actually an anime written before. Or that. maybe a show. Or yeah. A, yeah, maybe. I don't know. If you guys know, let us know. Okay, one out of ten. What would you? Give? Well, I'd give it about a, a six. You're being nice. A okay, six, six is good. Six point five. A six, six, six is watchable. Yeah, yeah it's, it's watchable with first time. You know, multiple times. I don't know. A four. Four? Hell a four. Because I, w- I don't even want... I didn't even watch it to do this. <laughs> like, I mean, if you guys like it, you like it. Let us know what you think. Yes. This is just our hum- our humble opinions. Uh, you know, it's entertaining. This to, again, extent. this is the first movie for the month of movies. The next yeah. movie is going to be interesting. Like I said, we, we didn't get to watch what we wanted to watch this time around. Uh, I know, I was looking forward to Bill and Ted. Yeah, Bill, we were going to do Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, and uh, yeah, yeah. it just didn't work out. So, Again, guys, we want to thank you for watching. We hope to see you next week when we're doing more month of movies. We want you to stay nerdy, stay sexy. Always. Always.